Morning, everyone. It's Friday of the seventh week of Ordinary Time, so we begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. You know, some of the most interesting things when couples come in to get married, I always ask them, like, how did you do your engagement? How did you propose? And there's really some very interesting stories that go with that. So as we begin, let's kind of think for a moment about those people that have really taught us what love is all about. For the times we forgot the importance of keeping one another, we ask God forgiveness, and so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God, our Father, we ask you to bless us, to continue to guide us, that we may share in the gifts of your love through Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. James. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, because the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes mean yes and your no mean no, that you may not incur condemnation. The word of the Lord. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful. Friends, may the Lord be with you. Let us be attentive to the reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came to the district of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds gathered around him as was his custom. He again taught them. The Pharisees approached him and asked, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were, of course, testing him. He said to them in reply, what did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, because of your hardness of hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The gospel of the Lord. You know, I was thinking about a couple of things. Um, back as a young priest, I did a wedding where um, this couple, they met at Hot Dog Johnny's, if you remember that place. And um, after they got married, the whole wedding party got on a school bus and they drove to Hot Dog Johnny's. The bus took them to Hot Dog Johnny's. They had a hot dog. Then when they came back, everybody got out of their, quote, formal clothes. And before Montage Mountain was developed, we were up there and we played wiffle ball, we played badminton, we played volleyball, we played horseshoes. It was just a kind of a very unconventional wedding and reception. But I read the other day about a couple who was married in Minnesota. Their names were Chara Janu and Adam Claude. Get this, they decided to get married and they began where their love story began, at the headquarters of Feed My Starving Children. They met in 2017 while packing meals at this nonprofit that ships food to hungry children all around the world. And they spent many nights there packaging and sealing meal bags. 
Well, as it turns out, get this. Adam proposed to her at the at this place, the Feed My Starving Children place. So, get this. After they got married, they invited 75 guests to their wedding. After they got married, guess where they went? They went to Feed My Starving Children. They put on their hair nuts, hair nets, and they again started making meals to be shipped to starving children around the world. But here's what they said. People have traditions. I wanted ours to be us and be unique to us. Well, that's probably not a real bride's dream to have her reception there. But when you think about it, boy, that had to be really, really something. I'm hopefully they'll be able to tell their children and hopefully their grandchildren about how they met, where they proposed, and where their wedding reception was. Because I can almost guarantee you, I don't think a lot of wedding receptions were held at a place like that. God bless. For the opportunities we have to help others who don't even know who we are, we pray. The church may always be a sign of God's love, we pray. The church may always be open to welcoming all people, we pray. God, our Father, we ask you to hear our prayer and to bless our journey through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to give you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to give you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Friends, let us pray that our gifts will be acceptable to God, our loving Father. O Lord, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant that they may come for us for now, the sacrament of our eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, love is our origin. Love is our constant calling. Love is our fulfillment in heaven. So we truly join our loved ones in heaven as we pray this hymn of an ending praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke the bread gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world, Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop. Remember Margaret Caprell and Joseph Gaynor Cawley, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection for all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait with joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of the church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of our Lord be with each one of you. Let's offer to one another a sign of God's love. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed all those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to our eternal salvation, our faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May God's blessing continue to guide our journey, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Have a good weekend, everyone.